Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. A lot of people feel Kubernetes is difficult. Even before they start learning Kubernetes, they look at the content of Kubernetes and they feel it's ocean. They can't get it there. Even some of my subscribers, they reached out to me on community tab or on Slack asking, Abhishek, can I skip Kubernetes? I want to become DevOps engineer or cloud engineer. I'm okay to learn Ansible, shell scripting, Linux, but can I just skip Kubernetes? Is it possible to become DevOps and cloud engineer? I'm sure a lot of people also have this question and a lot of people want to understand the future of Kubernetes. In this video, I will try to explain that and I will try to keep this video very short. To be honest, in 2025, a lot of companies are still interested in containerization and container orchestration. Let's understand why. Every company wants to move towards microservice architecture. And as they move to microservice architecture to make the best out of it, they want to containerize their microservices. Once they containerize, they need a target platform and that target platform should solve the problem of ephemeral containers such as scaling, healing, service discovery and a lot of problems that containers have. At this point, that is in 2025, Kubernetes is still the best container orchestration platform. Of course, there are alternatives. You have ECS by Amazon, you have Docker Swam, and you have other options as well. But Kubernetes, with the support that it provides, with the pace it, it solves the issues, the strong community that it has, it is still the leader in this space. And at least according to me, it will continue to be the leader because of the ecosystem, because of the custom resources, and because of being opinionated in certain places and not opinionated at the places where people get benefited. So because of all of these reasons, I believe Kubernetes will continue to be the market leader at least for three to five years to come. So because of this, you should be learning Kubernetes. Moreover, if you look at the advancements in the IT, for example, agentic AI, or if you look at MLOps, AIOps, you take a machine learning workload today, even MLOps engineers want to use Kubernetes as a target platform. You have Wasm, you have different ways to deploy ML workloads. Even if you look at agentic AI, people want to use Kubernetes as the target platform for their agents. Or the very popular one in the space, OpenAI, they also deploy their workloads on Kubernetes. So either you are looking at the legacy system or you are looking at the advancements in the IT, such as agentic AI, MLOps, AIOps. In both of these things, Kubernetes is still the target platform. Of course, not every company in the legacy space use Kubernetes. There are companies which still use virtual machines. There are companies for which Kubernetes might not be a solution. But if you look at the wider perspective, because you are preparing for interviews, you should look at something which has larger adoption. And Kubernetes has the larger adoption today. And going ahead, also, it is going to have larger adoption. So either for DevOps, either for AOps, either for MLOps, or even if you are a developer or tester in 2025, Kubernetes is something that you have to watch out for. We have simplified Kubernetes. If you go to the channel and if you look at Kubernetes zero to hero series, even for a layman, for someone who don't know what is Kubernetes, for someone who don't even know containers, we made Docker zero to hero and Kubernetes zero to hero, which can take you from zero of containers to hero of containers and orchestration. I'll put both of that links in the description. I hope this video answered your question. 
please make sure you don't ignore kubernetes in 2025 let me know if you have any questions related to this topic i am more than happy to help see you all in the next video take care